small and medium enterprises play a significant role in driving the country's growth by contributing about 45% of India's industrial output and employing about 600 lakh people. Add to that the growth rate of 8% per annum and we have numbers that look great on paper. But the ground reality is that most of the core issues related to SMEs still remain, including funding, branding and technology. In this episode, experts, leaders, analysts and investors share the secrets to creating and running a successful enterprise. And the first secret towards this is being in a position to raise capital. But how do you raise it? Who do you turn to? And what do you do when you have it? All of us when we were asked earlier on what exactly is the most important thing on our minds? What is the most important thing that we all need? And we all talked about funding, finance. Uh, before we quickly move on, I'd like to know how many of us here, I say us because I'm, you know, Ajay just said that I'm also an investor and also an entrepreneur myself. Uh, how many of us actually uh, uh, have taken funding uh, from A, mortgages? You know, mortgaged your house, one has the courage to openly admit two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excellent. How many of us have mortgaged our wife's jewelry? Nobody's going to admit it firmly. I know that. You know, but I can say that I've done that when I started. And you know, I'm sure a lot of us might have. But then I made a promise to my wife that it will come back to you in four years. And it did. Uh, at the same time, you know, I also made lots of promises to lots of investors, which my uncle, my uncle's son, my mama, you know, a lot of people in that process. And, you know, to some people I kept on, you know, repaying and to some people I told them come on board, you know, for a long term thing. So that was the very basic element from where all of us derive basically money to actually run our business our small or medium business. In fact, when we said small and medium business earlier on in the uh, session, we were talking about why this forum? You know, the forum, we want to change the name. You know, we call small and medium in, uh, enterprises. But I thought we were looking at the objective of actually changing the meaning of those three words to strong, successful, sustainable, my enterprise. You know, that was the objective. You know, to create strong, successful, sustainable enterprises. And that all of us are proud to have those enterprises. You know, business goes through all sorts of ups and downs. Unless a couple of businesses shut down or you do badly, you won't learn. So it is fine. Not doing well is also fine. You know, because there is always, you know, when you have failure, only then you can get success. People who have had success earlier on, I remember a friend, and I really call him a friend, Sabir Bhatia. I met him in the US when he was about to start. I was heading Mafatlal those days, and I opened an office in New York. And um, uh, he was setting up this company, which is an email company. And I told him, I've done this long back. You know, Data Pro started the first email service in India. So why the hell are you wasting time in it? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Don't worry. Let us see what will happen. And several years later, he was specifically focused on it. Several years later, he actually came to the point wherein he actually sold it to Microsoft, made money, and is still trying. And now he's trying. You know, he's been successful that first time. And he's still trying to get something as big off the ground. And I'm very sure, you know, for people who try, there's always hope. स्टॉक मार्केट में हमेशा एक हम एक सिखाते हैं कि स्टॉप लॉस एक फ्रेज होता है स्टॉप लॉस करके कोई भी ट्रेड कर रहे मान लीजिए सौ रुपए में खरीद रहे एक सौ बीस के टारगेट के हिसाब से बट नाइनटी फाइव रुपीज का स्टॉप लॉस लगाइए अगर सौ रुपए वाली चीज नीचे आ रहे तो पांच रुपए के लॉस से मैक्सिमम आप निकल जाएंगे सेम चीज एक एंटरप्रेन्योर को भी अपने लाइफ के लिए लगाना पड़ेगा क्योंकि एंटरप्रेन्योर इस बहुत बड़ा बैटल चला रहा है 
बहुत बड़े कॉम्प्लिकेटेड वेरिएबल से डील कर रहे हैं ये एक स्टॉप लॉस लगा जब भी एक नया वेंचर शुरू हो रहे हैं नया बिजनेस में आ रहे हैं दो साल तीन साल पांच साल आपके माइंड सेट के हिसाब से एक लगाइए कि मैं इस प्रोजेक्ट में तीन साल लड़ूंगा मैक्सिमम लड़ूंगा हंड्रेड एंड वन परसेंट डेडिकेशन दिखाऊंगा बट तीन साल से ज्यादा नहीं क्योंकि वी हैव टू रिमेम्बर कि हमारे पूरे फैमिली डिपेंडेंट है नहीं तो अगर तीन अगर पूरे बीस साल तीस साल हो गया प्रोजेक्ट चला रहे अभी भी अभी भी आप कुछ ड्रीम्स देख रहे कुछ होने वाला है कुछ होने वाला है कि देन तो हम हमारे फैमिली को रिस्क में डाल रहे हैं इस प्रोसेस में हमारे फैमिली को रिस्क में डाल रहे हैं इसलिए बिजनेस करिए बट लेकिन इसमें एक स्टॉप लॉस लगा के करिए कि मैं यहां तक ही जाऊंगा क्योंकि मेक नो मिस्टेक आजकल तो कारपोरेट वर्ल्ड में सैलरीज इतने ज्यादा बढ़ गया कि नया नए बच्चों के जो एमबीए से आ रहे हैं उनको उनको पच्चीस लाख का सैलरी मिल रहा है यहां पूरा साल निकालने के बाद भी इतना प्रॉफिट नहीं आती है बहुत सारे ऐसे इसको कहने की कोशिश यह है कि आजकल तो कारपोरेट वर्ल्ड में सैलरीज बहुत अच्छे बढ़ गए खुद को एक स्टॉप लॉस लगाइए मैं तीन साल लड़ूंगा इसमें बन गया तो अच्छी बात है नहीं तो कोई ईगो में मत जाइए कि एक अच्छे जॉब करना कोई ऐसे कोई क्राइम नहीं है कोई गलत बात नहीं क्योंकि ऐसा वाला माइंडसेट ना हो कि नहीं तो लगे रहेंगे इसे इसे ऐसे कोई फायदा नहीं होगा Coming up after the break, K V Srinivasan of Reliance Commercial Finance talks about what an investor is looking for when trying to assist SMEs. Stay tuned. The secret to building a successful enterprise lies in raising capital. How does an enterprise position itself so as to attract investments? Should it go for private equity or venture capitalists? What are the pitfalls? K V Srinivasan of Reliance Commercial Finance shares the right approach. Uh, small is beautiful, but is it really powerful? Uh, yes, the current. Uh, parameters are very clear that uh, you know about 40 45% of our exports and uh, more than half of our manufacturing output etc is controlled by smes uh, smes typically are stories that don't come into the public eye uh, you only hear about a very small fraction of those success stories and the failures uh, but really can one ignore the sector obviously uh, it is a very important thing you know it's uh, to my mind even the government recognizes the importance of the smes so much so that a specific ministry under a cabinet minister has been created for looking into the affairs of the smes so certainly it is an important sector i don't think we can really ignore while it may be silent it is significant so where does the growth capital for the smes really come from it comes from various options one is of course the loan side where we have the options of taking a loan against property or uh securities or infrastructure funding logistics finance operating lease which is also emerging as an important way to fund your capital requirements and of course the all important working capital which typically uh banks provide as well as uh letters of credit and bill discounting and so on and so forth certainly there are things which are beyond uh, just the loan side you also need to have avenues for parking short term funds in terms of savings and investments products but more important i think the, there is a growing growing realization among the smes that their own sources of capital are probably inadequate when it comes down to scaling up uh, to a great degree initially yes one starts off with the most important law which is ba basically father in law and uh, his funds uh, but once it grows beyond the means of the family uh i think there is a need for external growth capital which is where private equity and venture capitalists become very important but more important than just purely providing funds i think there is a growing need for giving proper advisory services that what is right and what is wrong what should you do to manage your business better i think that's becoming far more important and i i can see a lot of uh, organizations actually growing up uh, to provide uh, advisory services to smes and not just provide uh, funds and then uh, sit tight on them saying uh, i don't care how you run your business uh from a lender or investor's perspective i thought 
what are the things that we really look for? Obviously, we look for what sort of industry that the SME is involved in. Is it a growth industry or is it something which is a kind of a sunset industry? There is a difference in the way you would look at an e-commerce e kind of an entity and an umbrella manufacturer. One is a mature, almost dying kind of an industry and the other one is possibly a sunrise one. So there is a different way in which you look at the entity itself. What are the kind of government policies that are there which affect the business? Is it too much government control in terms of pricing or in terms of uh, the pollution related issues? Uh, or is it something which is free and anybody can do whatever his creativity would permit him to do? Uh, and what is the impact of technology? Is it in a completely stable kind of an environment as far as technology is concerned or is it susceptible to becoming obsolete uh, in a quick, uh, pretty quick time? So these are the industry type which, uh, which really we look for when we uh, try and uh, assist uh, SMEs. Many times we have seen that SMEs are taken by surprise. Oh, I've got bad rating. My loans have gone above five, five crores. And I have to do rating for capital risk adequacy of the bank. The interest rate goes up all of a sudden because the bank has to allocate higher capital charge because of your bad rating or average rating. Now, here is what we educate our SME customers. Before you get into regulatory mold, why don't you see where you stand? Now, what we have on the slide is SME 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alongside, you have A minus, triple B plus. Now, that is what the banks look at in terms of allocating capital from their capital because of your risk. Now, on the other side, I have risk weights, which is 100%, 115, 120. It's not perfect, but I've just kept you some... Um, percentages to give you an idea that the moment you get rated, let's say, triple B or triple B minus, the risk weights for the banker goes up to 110%, which means his capital is taken away and he has to charge you higher interest rate. So many a times we have told our customers, rate yourself before you cross into five crores bank loan. See where you stand. Today you are SME 4, which is slightly invest, below investment grade. But as you go successively improve eyes, you may probably get into SME 1, SME 2. And many of them have done it. Many of the prudent customers of ours have done it. And when they get into the bank regulatory mode, they realize that the interest rates have not gone up. So this is one of the disciplines that we have realized. Coming up after the break, we address a whole host of issues ranging from lending versus equity, identifying the right venture capitalists and the importance of term sheet. Stay tuned. The secret to building a successful enterprise lies in choosing. Choosing between lending and equity. Choosing between two prospective venture capitalists. Choosing between buyback and control. First point on uh, lending versus equity. I think it's a, it's a, these are two important sources of funding for any entrepreneur. Uh, but there are some fundamental differences which I think you should take note of uh, if you are approaching either of them. So in lending when, uh, you know, typically a banker would like to see steady cash flows which can service uh, the principal and interest payments. In case of VCs, it's not more, it's not about cash flows as much as, you know, uh, what kind of inflection points the business is going to see in the investment period. Uh, the expectation of a typical VC guy is that the scale will go up something like three to five times in, let's say, five to six years, the margins would improve. So you have to demonstrate that, that there's going to be one or two inflection points in next three to five years, which could come because of new products, because of new geographies, new markets, uh, new technology. So that demonstration is extremely important for any VC guys to get interested um, uh, in, in your plan. 
So a business plan which is acceptable to a banker may not be acceptable to a VC guy. So you have to prepare accordingly. Uh, secondly, as Shini pointed out, that most of the lending in India still happens against collateral. Uh, VC funding is pure risk capital. There are no collaterals involved. So the process is also very different. The return expectations are very different. You know, you can get probably loans in the range at an interest rate of, you know, ranging from something like 10% to maybe 16%, 17% in this environment. Uh, but when you ask any VC guy, the expectations of returns are usually, you know, in an SME perspective is usually between 25 to 30%. So it is expensive capital. Please, you know, a lot of people confuse it with, you know, that it's coming without any collateral, so probably it's cheap, it is free. No, it is not at all. The expectations which come with any equity funding is that, you know, they'll get returns in the range of 25 to 30% minimum. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, also, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, you, uh, when, when, when you're looking at uh, uh, VC funding, just make sure that you are adequately prepared. Uh, you know, what, what I have seen that, you know, uh, that the business plans and the entrepreneurs don't prepare them enough to approach a VC guy. Uh, for example, you know, you know, they, the approach is usually top down that, you know, I need a million dollar, I need two million dollars, I need three million dollars. You know, and we, I'm still seeing a lot of business plan which are like 5 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores, 25 crores. Uh, we like business plan which are more bottom up, you know, you need to really accurately estimate what kind of funding do you need, you know. Uh, so I haven't come across a business plan which says I need funding of let's say 8.35 crores. So please, please identify what are, what are your funding requirements for a, what kind of uh, end usage you're going to put this capital to. Uh, how we utilize next 6 to 12 months. There's no point raising money if you want to do your project, let's say, 18 months from now. So look at what is, what is realistic, what, what, how much can you handle. It's not about raising money, it's not about raising uh, 20 crores, 20 crores, 30 crores. It's, it's, it's a question of how much you can put it to use, you know, and that result of that capital has to come uh, in next 3-5 years. So please keep, keep that in mind. If you have funding requirements across various time frames, do multiple stage funding, do round one, round two, round three, as you would have seen in many startups. So think from uh, that's, that, that perspective. On identification of VC guys, uh, I think it's very important to identify VCs which are aligned with your objectives. Uh, in India, there are about 300 to 400 private equity venture capital funds. It's very unfortunate that the funds which are focusing exclusively on SMEs are probably 20 to 30, if I can say so. So please make sure that you're targeting the right, right VCs. Uh, make sure uh, that they're aligned. You know, a lot of investors say that you want to exit in three years. And to me, it looks very, very tough for any SME to give a reasonable return in three years' time. Three years take to just make any project start working, etc. So make sure that investment horizon is consistent with your growth plans. Uh, and that brings to the question of exit. You know, a lot of SMEs, don't really think too much about it, but exits are important for uh, venture capitalists. Uh, you know, venture capital, if I can put in some ways, you know, getting married with an intention to uh, diverse. So you have to think about that at the right at the beginning. What, what, how can I give exit to my investor? Typically, it is, you know, selling to other investors, which could be strategic. It could be financial investors, or sometimes it is also buyback. So I think those conditions have to be thought through right at the beginning, it has to be discussed with the VC guys. Uh, some, we, we call it, you know, term sheet uh, in technical terms where you put all the conditions on which VC is entering. So it's not about money only. There are a lot of rights which VC so seek when they're investing, like information rights, exit rights, corporate governance rights. So make sure that you are aligned on that front. We have seen a lot of venture capital investments go haywire because of lack of alignment uh, between the promoter and the investor. We spoke about venture capital and PE and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things which I heard a lot of SMEs uh, talk about or actually feel very uh, scared about is that if I let a PE or a venture capitalist come into my business, they will start exercising control and take away the control from me and maybe sell my company to somebody else. Uh, you know, it's, it's a fear which is, I don't know how much uh, founded it is, uh, so how would you like to address that? 
Okay, Shrini, uh, uh, very uh, relevant question. And uh, let me tell you, even the, uh, mo the most progressive SMEs, which, which uh, we talk for uh, uh, majority of them uh, are not willing to part away with controls. So you, in India, you don't see uh, PE funds buying out companies. You don't see PE funds acquiring uh, something like 51% plus stake. Most of the deals happen at a dilution level of something like 10 to 30%. So you are right. Most, most entrepreneurs uh, fear that uh, they, they should not give control and probably rightly so because there are not too many funds which can run companies. And since most of the companies are entrepreneur driven, entrepreneur is key uh, to the company's future valuations and growth plans. I think more important thing than uh, control or no control situation, I would again emphasize is that, you know, are you aligned? You know, because as I said, investors are not there forever. They have to make an exit if the patient investors, maybe in seven years, if the investors want quick money, maybe four years, five years. So I think important thing is that you take company to that level where investor can get an exit. And in those situations, you can get in a situation where somebody is seeking 51% and the investor has let's only 26%. So is entrepreneur willing to part away with his 20, 25% shares to give an exit? And that's where the problem comes. So we, we believe that these, this kind of situation have to be envisaged well in advance and has to be part of the, your term sheets and shareholder agreement so that there is no, uh, there's no uh, probability of you, know, two, you having two different objectives when, you, when, when the investor is exiting. So by and large, will I be right if I say that most of the VCs or PEs are really not interested in running the business, but they are more interested in taking the company up to a level and then actually exiting, leaving the management control with the entrepreneur provided uh, the, the affairs have been managed well? Absolutely. I think that's, that's where the industry is now. Uh, if you look at US, Europe, uh, there are a lot of funds which are purely buyout funds or controlling stake funds. Uh, but I don't think in India we as fund managers, and I can speak for most of the fund managers, have bandwidth to run companies, particularly SMEs. So probably that kind of scenario is uh, maybe 10 years or 15 years away in India. In the next episode, we take you to part two of Secrets of Success, SME funding. Tune in next week.